Howdy folks, my name is Damon from RC Scare Models and today we have another kit. This is one of the uh, items that I'm going to use in my upcoming diorama, which is going to take me a long time to do anyway. But this is the German WR360 C12 locomotive. It's like a small train uh, for moving vehicles around and equipment and I call it like a shunter train, but people will uh, comment down in the the comments down below if I'm correct or what it's actually used for because I'm not 100% sure on trains and stuff I just like building them and I just like like trains but I'm not actually 100% sure what they're actually kind of designed for if you know what I mean but this is 135 scale so the diorama is going to be a large scale there's going to be several pieces a large train, carriages, gondolas, weapons, crew if you look on the video that I previously uploaded of all the pieces I have so far, go and check that out. But this is done by Trumpeter. Um, you got side of the box what it can potentially look like. Uh, uh, 2018, the kit was a little bit of history. Uh, kit number 00216. Um, and one of the colours you can do with red wheels, and it's mainly a grey body. I'll probably just do it all grey all over. I won't bother with the red wheels. Depends how much painting is involved. So this is what we get inside the box. Trumpeter's sturdy boxes, I do like the boxes, loaded with plastic, we've got suspension and wheels, some fragile parts, some clear windows, they're going to be no problem because they're just flat, you know, clear, looks like the uh, cab, looks like the main body, side rails, there's instructions, colours, these parts of the track I'm not going to need, so I am going to use the actual rails. A little bit of photo etch for the front grille. These are the actual tracks and sleepers, I'll be using these. And this looks like the body. So this is the uh, trumpeter instructions, it's a side opening page, not uh, normally the other way around, so pretty standard, symbols what not to do, and glue, weights and etc, pretty standard stuff, always black and white, first page is everything in the kit, as I mentioned before always, just a good way of checking to make sure everything's there, the first step they are working or asking you to work on sleepers, train rails and track and we have the uh, the ballast base, display base comes in several parts, I'm not going to actually, like I mentioned before, I'm not actually going to use this but I will use the track and sleepers uh, once the uh, sleepers are glued in from underneath you can attach the rail but I, I'm not going to say not going to do it that way, I'm just going to attach the uh, rail straight to the sleepers. I will show you how to do that without using the uh, ballast. Uh, underside of the uh, train we have the side skirts for where the wheels sit so this is all the suspension, arms, pretty standard left and right. Once the left and right done you've got the pins for the wheels to go through. This looks like a roller at the front we have the cab floor, touching your wheels, and hydraulic arms maybe, I'm not 100% sure. These look like counterweights for the wheel. And then we have the, uh, the train arms that allows the train to constantly shift, I don't know what they're called. But I know these, I know these are brakes which are being attached. Just like a front bumper and then we have the front of the train with the uh, 
stump uh, bumpers and whatever and hydraulic lines and the uh, cables for hooking it all up you do get cables in plastic but I am going to swap these out for probably rubber hose but I'm going to keep the ends so I can attach the uh, vehicles together uh, attach the front bumper and then the lower sashi can be attached to the upper floor we have some more cylinders doesn't actually say what they're for just makes two of them some boxes we have these cylinders on the front probably oil maybe we have a step ladder for getting off on and off the vehicle more grab handles this is inside the part of the cab I believe this is um, the turning wheels for turning certain things on and off again I don't know what they're for main body of the train we've got the doors I believe this is a diesel train if I'm not mistaken it's a Deutz engine and it is a Deutz train um, more grab rails by the looks of things this assembly you built previously goes in this is part of the cab and then we've got the cab body sides and front and rear the doors are closed if you want them open you're going to have to slice down here and here and then obviously you adjust it this door you can have open because it's a separate piece inside the uh, crew compartment you've got more uh, levers and stuff inside the uh, train driving area this is the front grille for the front radiator as I say there is no engine I have tried to find an engine for this but I can't see anyone making a uh, Deutz engine I could always make my own type of engine and, and scratch build and try and rig something up but I don't know if it's going to be accurate we have some lights the uh, roof going on I might leave the roof attachable so you can open it and have a look on the diorama the boarding ladder on the side of the uh, vehicle I think this is another another I've seen these hatch in the center I've seen it open like this on pictures and these doors open normally again some of these doors if I can figure out an engine of some sort to go inside here these doors I can have open obviously this one is closed because it's one piece but this one I can have it open and possibly these because these are two separate doors if I can't figure out an engine then it's going to be closed up and then once uh, all that cab is assembled you can attach it to your lower chassis and it's a completely train by then and it's ready for paint pretty much it's going to be grey like it is in, on the call outs it's German grey with uh, red wheels and stuff um, these trains are still being used I have seen them and they're in all weird all different colors now there are black ones gray ones I've even seen some like orange type vehicles they're probably for maintenance and stuff now but nothing on the back we do get this fellow which is for some walkways and those levers and the main grill and that's pretty much it so in, the, in here it looks like we have the body so yeah we have the main body of the train it's going to need a little bit of clean up on these bars there's a tiny bit of flash there but it's not a problem but nice detail with bolts and rivets so you've got doors here on both sides and you've got doors here so I, I, I am trying to find an engine to fit this because I would like it to be a little bit more detailed than the standard even if I can mention before if I can come up with something even if it's not accurate it's just going to be a little bit more more pleasing to the eye I think but it's nicely moulded you're not going to worry about the inside you've got a little bit of a when the kit was made and manufacture but you're not going to see that nicely done so
So let's take a quick look at these pieces. I'm not going to get these out of the bag. I'm not going to use them anyway, but they're pretty standard. And they just clip together. So you've got one end, two shorts, one end and one long. Um, railroad tracks and sleepers. So we've got this protective sponge, so let's get that out of the way. So we have nice long railroad tracks, uh, actually the actual rail itself. So these are being painted like a uh, dirty metal colour and then the tops where the track will go will be a shiny metal because that's contact. The sleepers don't look too bad, we do have a wood grain effect. It doesn't carry around to the sides unfortunately, but you're not probably not going to see the ones on the side because the ballast to go right up to it. So these are going to have to be painted a really dark brown, blacky colour. These are metal, again they'd be possibly a little bit shiny, a little bit of rust and a little bit of dirty grime metal. These parts are just for supports, don't want to cut them off. Um, they are hollowed out. But it'd still be uh, pretty simple to put together. These come as one piece, so just snip them off. The best way of doing this, though, if I've, I have found on someone else building this in, in the past, the little tip they come up with was cutting the uh, sleepers, uh, leaving sorry, leaving the sleepers on, on the sprue, cutting the rail off because this is already fixed and it's not going to twist. Run your your, uh, your rail through the uh, sleeper already. Once it's once you've built it. You can snip these off, but as I say, snip these off, paint them, paint this, then run the rail through and then snip it off and it'll be already uh, in place because it's not going to twist. And these ones are in the sealed bags this time. So we have the bottom of the train, those jet the pins, but that's facing downwards, so I wouldn't worry about too much. Um, however, this is the upper side, so you've got a little bit of wood grain effect, diamond plating. This is the main body, so we'll sit over the top of this, so the, the, any engine will sit in here. As I say, I'm still trying to figure something out for that. Side rails, very nicely done with the bolts and rivets part of the cab again you can have the door open because it is optional the uh, glass goes from the inside you're probably going to have to take care of these ejector pins though if you're having it having the roof uh, not attached so you can have it uh, posable which I'm going to have to take care of these pins for sure um, these are the bump front and rear bumpers. We have another part of the cab. Again, jetter pins I'm gonna have to take care of. That's pretty pretty much it. That's nicely done this sprue. What we have here, this is gonna have some fragile parts in it by the looks of things. It's wrapped up again. So it looks like we have two sprues, so we're only going to need to look at one of these. So we have doors to do with the uh, main engine. Um, 
Again, there are ejector pins on that side, but as if it's all closed up, you haven't got to worry about it. But if you are trying to pose it open, you're going to probably have to take care of them. We have all the clamps, these bogey section for the suspension arms and wheels, part of the brake assembly, small detail parts. I'm not 100% sure what all of this is for. These are quite fragile, so you want to be careful. But it's nice and crisp and clean. Um, I'm not sure how to do it. Oh, the, this was covering these parts. So this one has wheels and possibly air tanks and stuff. I do have a uh, book how to weather trains and stuff. I will use it for somewhat uh, parts. So this is two again two parts. These are wheels and everything else. So we have nice moulded wheels. So again. The edge is going to have to be painted silver because that's the contact point. Grab handles, more doors. This is for the main engine. There is the piping, but I'll be swapping out for proper tubing. Two piece tanks. I suppose you need air tanks. More suspension. There's like leaf springs type. And these are these are the counterweights. For the wheel and these are parts of the uh, bumpers on the front and so there's two of those sprues and here we have the cab roof cab body looks like some more parts for the wheels It's a flash. So we've got some grab handles which are super super fine fragile and details. Be super careful taking them off the sprue. Here's that roller for the front. These tanks, again I'm not sure what they were for, are air or oil or something, I don't know. More detail parts. This looks like a uh, structural part. Here's part of the uh, side cab. That's the outer side. And that's the inside. There's a couple of ejector pins you're going to have to take care of. And a little bit of wood grain. Here is the uh, doors for the uh, roof of the uh, engine deck. Again, it opens up like this. Weird shape. So again, if you want it open, you're going to have to slice down the middle part. It looks pretty cool and nice and crisp and clean. And here we have the main roof of the cab. Jet to pins. There's only six, so it's not too bad. Here's another roof part, inside the cab, brakes, more detail parts, these are for the wheels, so don't glue your wheels to them because otherwise it probably won't spin, but if you're having it fixed model, it doesn't really matter, more air brakes, or, or brakes, more grab handles, structural spars, this looks like part of the, uh, this is the uh, front grille, so is that part of the uh, main engine deck. This is a seat for the uh, one of the crew members. Very basic, but it's a very nice kit. A little bit of detail in here and there should be nice and done. I'm not going to get these out the bag. They're just going to be standard clear windows. They're going to be pretty damn good because they're just flat clear 
plastic. It is proper plastic, which is nice. It's not none of that um, flimsy crap stuff. What is it? Uh, it's not the crappy acetate you get with some kits, so it should be nicely. The book I'm going to use for weathering and stuff. This is the book I have for weathering vehicles and tankers and stuff. Strangely enough, some of these vehicles I've never even seen as kits, so I don't know where I could get them from. But again, you see here, it has the D, D360 in the book, and also this big train is another one I have. So. So we have different parts, uh, or how, how to weather certain parts within the kit. You can have them real rusty and beat up and grimy, and railroad dust. Um, so this looks like a tanker. I think these also you are actual proper trains um, as well, not actual just... Uh, you see the size of a, a bottle and they're only about this big which I do have a Finners which is the same size same size bottle it's done by big so this is how big it is and so obviously this trailer comes up to this so this is probably is it double O gauge which is their biggest scale for trains um, as I say I'm not 100% sure so it's not a very big piece so this is probably, uh, probably actually a real railroad piece weather in Total rust buckets. Um, I'm not going to do mine beat up by that, but it's still good techniques though for doing rust techniques. Um, and some dioramas. It does look cool though, I'll give it that. You have some box cars, as I call them. Again, I'm not 100% sure what they're called. Again, how to weather them. The roof is probably going to take the most weathering. Streaking, grimes, dust. We have small trains. Again, these are looks like proper trains. Again, and here is the real thing to compare to the weathered model and stuff, which looks damn good gondolas and wagons again these are small ones as you can tell by the size of the bottle next to it so these are definitely uh, scale trains for sure diesel tankers these are down to scale trains this is definitely tiny so you see the size of a bottle which is this size bottle roughly um, and this is going to be about this big so this is tiny but again you can still apply the same techniques for, for big scale um, as I say I do have a tanker um, so I will be using some of this kind of technique Here is a small locomotive. Here is a uh, D360, which I've just shown you. So I will be using this for inspiration. I won't be beating mine up as much as that though. Um, but what they've done is done it with basic German grey. It looks like they've done white highlights, and that's how I do mine pretty much. Um, on German grey on top, I, that's how I do my. Yeah, of course, this has got some camouflage on it, which I didn't realise. That looks pretty cool, actually. I might do the camouflage version instead of just being grey. Instead of being, uh, as I say, just, yes, instead of just being boring old grey, it might break it up a bit. If it's only the wheels and the, uh, um, the arms for the wheels is red, then I might actually do the wheels red because there isn't a lot on there. And then it's streaking with oils. I probably will do the oil streaking and a little bit of dust and grime, but it won't be 
heavily, heavily beat up. So I don't like my vehicles like that. Box cars, again, these look like tiny scales because you can compare it to uh, a humble bottle. But again, the techniques apply the same way. This is a small train, but I do have this train, but in big scale, in 135. But again, same techniques can apply. The only slight difference is, is the back piece here is slightly different, but the actual main train looks pretty, pretty, pretty close. So yeah, it, it's a pretty cool book. American trains, I think they are. Some old, old trains. I recognise that guy. Isn't that the guy from Dustworks? The uh, creator, uh, designer, I'm pretty sure. Even a v VW uh, train, German one. It's pretty cool. Even uh, the real thing. Which is here. And then it goes on to some uh, other parts of the uh, railway. So it's a pretty cool book. So there you are folks, there's another kit from Trumpeter, 135 scale, it's the German WR360 C12 locomotive. Like, comment, subscribe and I'll catch you next time.